Okay. Let's hope not. You and you're on. Well said. I feel like I was getting a massage for prom. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost this week. Good afternoon. Welcome, everyone. Nice to see you, all of your beautiful faces here. And welcome to you folks who are here on Zoom as well. Um, Louise is managing our Zoom room. So if you have any questions, please feel free to put those into the chat and she'll bring them into the room for all of us here. Just to let you know that again, we are recording. So just be mindful of our background noise. But so delighted to see you all here for our, the next installment of our Princeville Mo'olelo series. This of course is a collaboration between Folks in the back, feel free to come on down. There's some seats here. Um, is a collaboration between the Friends of Kauai Wildlife Refuges and the Principal at Hanalei Community Association, just gathering our community together every month to share stories of wildlife conservation professionals around the island, um, Hawaiian cultural practitioners, just uh, different conversations that bring us together as a community. And so we're just delight so delighted to have you here with us. Quick little plug about who we are as the Friends Group. Uh, my, my name again is Thomas Daubert. I'm the Executive Director of the Friends Group. I'm really honored to have this role for a um, little over five years now. And who we are, we are the established Friends Group that brings support and love to the three national wildlife refuges that we have here on the island of Kauai. You're fortunate even on a tiny island to have three beautiful spaces federally set aside with protection to support uh, threatened and endangered wetland birds and seabirds. So we support Hanalei National Wildlife Refuge and Hulea National Wildlife Refuge. And again, those are refuges for endangered sea, uh, wetland birds. And Kilauea Point, of course, the refuge that most of us know and love because we get to visit that one, a refuge for our seabirds. So um, the real why, we uh, are here for these birds that need our love, our attention, and the protected spaces that allow them to that allow them to flourish. This is just a few of them, um, but just uh, to remember why we're here, what we're all coming together for. And uh, again, just a quick plug about what we do, how we help as a friends group. Essentially, we are the conduit for the love and generosity of our community to flow in support of our amazing U.S. Fish and Wildlife partners who every day show up so passionately in support of our, our wildlife and these spaces. We have Jennifer Waipa in the back. She's trying to keep a low profile back there, but I won't allow it. Aloha, Jen. She's our visitor services manager, and um, we're just so honored again to support all of our good friends in Brown that support our wildlife. But what we do is really, uh, the first and foremost, is bring resources to those programs that fish and wildlife need. Habitat maintenance, plant, uh, native plant restoration, monitoring our wildlife, any number of places that needs some financial assistance to help further their mission. Another piece of us as the Friends Group is we are able to go out into the community and share the story of this work. And that's part of what we're doing here today, bringing us together as a community and sharing the, that, that work with uh, folks in the community. Working at Kilauea Point, we're really honored to interact with over a quarter of a million people a year. And um, our team uh, is positioned there in the visitor center and get to educate and inspire folks from all across the world. And in addition to that, going out, uh, for example, we have a beautiful new window display at Kukui Grove right now. So I invite you to come check out our display that's featuring the taxidermy from uh, the three refuges. And that's just one of the places that we can bring the mission of Fish and Wildlife off the refuge and out into the community. One of the programs I'm really proud of is that we provide the financial support for all of the sick and injured birds from one of our refuges that gets transferred into the care of Save Our Shearwaters. This year, that cost was $30,000 and we were able to rise up and meet that cost and make sure that every one of those birds from our uh, wildlife receive that incredible care. As well, um, we wouldn't uh, be able to support educate, uh, be able to support conservation without looking to the future, and that is our young people. So we support any number of young people's programs First and foremost, the littles uh, that get to have classroom visits from our, um, our volunteers and our educators. And as well, we provide free, sorry, we provide free field trip, boy, that's two Fs I can't say, uh, buses to bring people, young people out to the refuge 
for a life-changing experience as those third graders come out and experience the majesty of Kilauea Point. And then on the other side of education, we also have a scholarship program in memory of Daniel Moriarty. And this year we gave away $25,000 worth of scholarships for young people who are studying in conservation-based careers. So these are just a couple of ways that we help. Um, the ways that you can help are to visit us at out at Kilauea Point and shop in our nature store, volunteer with us. Um, please, if you have not already, there's a sign-up sheet in the back if you're interested in learning more about what we do and staying connected with us. We send a newsletter out once a month and we'd be delighted to have you join us. This series, like I said, is a monthly series and just a quick plug for the next two slots on our calendar. On October 15th, we're going to welcome Karen Lobel Freed. She's gonna be here um, launching a beautiful new art book that she created um, with an exploration of the Hawaiian petrel. So it's a really neat species for us to, uh, to focus on and she's an amazing artist to be, uh, depict that in such a really creative way. And then the next one, on November 19th is Conservation Dogs of Hawaii and all of their incredible work. We have Deborah here in the room uh, who is the, uh, the champion for our Conservation Dogs partnership. So thank you, Deborah, and we look forward to hearing from you in November. But what we're all here for today is an incredible conversation and an exploration of an exciting, exciting collaboration of, of talent and wisdom and knowledge that's gonna be perpetuated to this beautiful, uh, beautiful uh, display of art out at Kilauea Point. And I will let the practitioners who know this project even better than I share that in a better way. But we're very honored today to welcome Kumuhula Kehalani Kekua. We'll speak, hear from her in just a moment. And the incredible artistry of Kathleen Hope. So uh, welcome to these beautiful ladies. And I will pass it over. Aloha, everyone. Thank you for coming. Um, it's an incredible honor to be here um, tonight and to share and introduce this project that we have. At, we are starting at the Kilauea Lighthouse. Um, this whole idea started uh, when Jen and Heather approached me about doing some uh, a mosaic on the new 100 foot long by four feet tall retaining wall at Kilauea Point. Um, that was eight years ago, and um, we've had a journey up until this point. But the reason I was, I really want to do a shout out to um, the main reason why we're here today. This is Carol Yatsuda, who's here in the audience. I just wanted to uh, mahalo her deeply from the bottom of my heart. I call her my hurricane beneath my wings. She is um, <laughs> the her. She's the hurricane. She. There's nothing that stops her. And once she heard about this project, she uh, used all her resources and talents and skills to go after funding and support this program. So um, just mahalo to her and the, especially the Garden Island Arts Council and the Boro Boro ladies who have been um, part of this uh, for two years. The ladies at the Boro Boro Boutique at uh, Carol's house have been sewing, creating one of a kind garments and um, been selling them to help uh, support this program. So also there's been support from grants and from the friends and from the, the lighthouse itself. So I'm really super grateful that we're at this moment, at this point in this long journey. Um, so uh, these are a few other community um, mosaics that I've done. I've done maybe four or five um, and this one I wanted to show, so um, our design will have multiple panels like this. This one is down in Kalapaki. Uh, if you ever are down that way, you should go check it out. It's 12 feet long by three feet high. And then this is the latest one that we did at uh, um, Alacoco Fish Pond. It is the Hawaiian moon calendar. Um, it's, um, yeah, it's also, these are all community-made projects, and that's what this one is will be as well. Um, so this design is inspired by Wawoni Point. Um, and of course, I had to use pretty much the whole entire 100-foot long wall in my design. Um, if you could see up here, this is a small sketch, and this is the sketch here of it. It is, the, um, it is to showcase that on, above and below the surface of the water of the whole entire archipelago. 
Um, it's, yes, it's the design, the art, the, um, it will be 16 panels, four feet by five feet, and uh, they'll be installed, worked on separately by the community and then installed together um, at, on this whole wall. So this is like a 25%, this is the wall and it will cover the entire wall. So um, uh, part of this project is to sort of educate people um, to bring awareness to the Oceana community that Hawaii is and the entire archipelago. Um, it's uh, such a you know fifteen hundred mile stretch from from birth at, on the Hawaii island to twenty two million years ago for uh, Holaniku, the furthest uh, in our archipelago, and just to uh, Papahana Mokuakea is like the largest marine national monument. And it, the more we can help educate people, um, they will have greater understanding of that value of that resources and knowledge that is held within this that space. Um, this is just to show that reference of that deep fundamental connection. You know, we don't see it. We feel like we're a little isolated islands, but really there is that one whole continuous deep connection. So that's what this whole, the intention of this visual design is and um, to just have a greater understanding of, of, our, of our place here in Hawaii. Um, and. Like I said, Papahanaumokuakea is an amazing place. I'd love to go visit there sometime. I never have. I have a friend that's at, on Nihoa at this moment, and um, he said it's like a, a life-changing experience. So um, the more we can um, understand this beautiful place, and really, um, as time has progressed, these island chains have like slipped below the surface of the water, right? Just, but they are teeming with life. And they're extremely beautiful from um, like a Google Earth map. So I love these pictures. So um, I feel like the inspiration of this design really was from Wawoni Point at Kilauea Point, um, just because it is that place that everybody can access, you know, easily access. Um, it's such a special and magical place and that people can really get a sense. When you go there, you can get that sense of that that wildness that reaches out beyond our shores here to the Northwest. Um, and a big part of this is about, um, oh yeah, here's our timeline. We're kind of like all over the place with this timeline at the moment. Um, we have, uh, we did uh, the, like I was saying, the, the Boro Boro ladies did a pop-up at uh, Kukui Grove and with their excitement and sewing talents and art, uh, creative expressions, they raised over $7,000 for this project at that event. Um, I have been still con collecting supplies, sort of looking for a, a permanent space. I have a storage space. And then uh, we started our cultural workshops um, and, and we're still looking for apprentices um, to help with this. And then it's also like the community engagement. Um, at the end, in October 19th, there's going to be a um, National Wildlife Refuge Week, and there'll be two workshops um, out at the Kilauea Community Agricultural Center. Um, on, yes, on October 19th, and Jen has the sign up for that. I think it's over there on the table if you want to participate in a, in a workshop. Um, these are some of the workshops that we have done. We did it for the staff of the, um, the Kilauea Point. They really were really excited about it. We had the Koi Sailing, um, Koi Sailing Association youth uh, learn about the uh, star navigation chart and then make stars. And then we had um, Halix Ecosystem Restoration start working on our seabirds. So they really were amazing because a lot of the seabirds look really realistic, which I was very impressed with because they're only tiny little birds. So um, tonight we'll be, um, if after this, after Kumo's presentation, we'll just be doing a little bit of stars if anybody wants to help participate and make a star that will be going into this mosaic. So this is like a condensed version of, uh, of our, our actual workshops. And so with that, I'd like to introduce. Yeah. <laughs> Kumo. You didn't take your 30 minutes. <laughs> uh, I, I, I didn't have 30. Sorry. Oh, that was you, Kumo. Sorry. 
Um, so a big part of this for me is about instilling that in incredible wisdom of the ancient Hawaiian and the culture because they really understood so much. And, and as scientists today, they're trying to even catch up to the knowledge that was held innately uh, in the culture. So Kumo is um, the big part of this uh, project is about Kumo expressing and, and offering her knowledge and to first and then to instill that knowledge into the actual art. So it's about culture, art, education, and then for the future of the people that will see it as an installed piece, I hope that that reflects in that piece. So I'm very, very grateful and honored to have Kumo Kehalani take it. Thank you. Oh, yeah, it's like yeah, thank you. Okay, so it's up here too, Julia. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, just follow the arrow. Okay. All right. Okay, I just stay within the. Uh, is this good, Louise? Aloha, my kako. Ua lave ia e kama kanio ai o pua mai pua uli o ai lua nui aho ano. Maluna na le kua lo lo ka i e i e i ka na ni o halele ka. Ma halua e na ma ku no ke aloha o kaua i ni o mano i ka malu kapua ne e kapua i o ka makahele i. Ya la na helei hiva hiva u ili me ke ala o ka vaiki a he le ka i e i e i ka poli o fi hana kala o ma ko na pula pula o palai hivo kai puai. Ah, hele o vale no ure. Aloha e. Aloha e. Aloha e. Aloha mai kako. Thank you so much for being here and mahalo Kat for including me in this exciting journey. Thank you, Thomas and the friends of Kauai's Wildlife Refuges for hosting this incredible gathering of sharing and talking story and learning. So I'm pretty much here for all of those same reasons because the more I share, the more I get in return e-care information and knowledge from what is being discussed on this particular platform. And I also wanna send my aloha all to everybody who's in the Zoom room that is Zooming in. What wonderful technology that we can all be a part of this. So Kat put up this screen, um, and I know I gave this chant to her some time ago. It's not one of those that I can just rattle off the top of my head, but I am a super fan of the Mo'olelo of Hiyaki Kapolio Pele, and of course, Pele Honua Mea, her oldest sister. People would be familiar with them as the goddesses of the of fire and volcano. Um, Pele Honua Mea, or Pele for short, is the female deity of fire and volcanoes. And then the youngest sister is Hiyaka Kapolio Pele, and she's a healer in the in the in the fire clan. So one of the one of the basis of the discussion of the bigger picture that is the Mo'olelo of this epic saga of of uh, Pele and Hiyaka is the fact that they are the divine sources of creating land and of bringing land to fruition and, um, and luxuriant green healing, um, medicinal forests and providing an environment for all of us to thrive in. So without these, without these resources, and these environments and nature, we would all really be struggling to find some level of comfort to dwell on these on the top of these mountain summits 
um, across Kopai Aino Hawaii. Same with our creatures, our birds, our wildlife, whether it's um, at the Kai or out in the ocean or up Mauka in the Nahele in the forest. So this particular um, chant is categorized as a mele ho'ala. Mele is a chant or a song in the Hawaiian language and ho'ala actually means to awaken. So mele ho'ala were done for several different uh, reasons, uh, primarily for the purpose of waking up, like physically waking up out of your slumber or a deep sleep, um, but even more importantly, to awaken the consciousness of understanding and knowledge. And so both cases of the word ho'ala, meaning to arise and awaken, is very important in this particular journey. So I just want to just touch on this really quick because it's up here and why not you make, make use of an opportunity. This particular chant translates as saying, um, awake now, awake, awake, wake now. So, you know, in the in the courts of the uh, of the of the royalty in ancient Hawaii, there was a particular person whose job was to do to take care of every need of the elite or the chief or chiefess. And one of those uh, responsibilities was to gently walk into the sleeping quarters of the ali'i and awaken the chief or the chiefess with a meleho ala early in the morning, like to gently wake he or she up from their deep slumber. Like, you know, we all have our phones timed to our alarm or we have somebody yelling from down the hall to get the heck up, you're gonna be late for work in school. Wouldn't we all want somebody to like chant us up from our deep slumber in the morning? So it says, awake now, awake, awake, wake now. Goddess of multiple God powers, awake. So this is a chant from Hi'iaka to her oldest sister Pele. Goddess of essence, most godlike, wake. Queen of lightning shaft, the piercing. Fourth eye of the heavens, awake. I pray thee awake. So if I'm just looking at this and I want to put a voice to it, and if I had the, the responsibility of waking up Pele, I would want to be very careful and gentle because <laughs> we don't want her to wake up on a bad, wrong side of the bed. So I would probably put a voice to, or an ea or a, a, a chanting voice, something like, um, and I'll just try it. Yeah, <laughs> We Hey, that's me. <laughs> and, um, you know, I came across this as I was preparing the presentation and I thought how fitting because I always, I love talking about them and sharing about Pele and Hi'iaka. And this picture was taken some years ago, maybe about 2016, but it's right at the crater. I was there for an overnight work trip. And if, if at all possible, it's appropriate to visit the crater. And so this was a little snapshot in time. I haven't been anywhere really um, since COVID. And so tonight I'm here to talk about Kapai Aina o Hawaii Ine, which is the name of the project. But translated, Kapai Aina o Hawaii Ine is the archipelago of the Hawaiian Islands. Okay, so here is a view of Kapai Aina o Hawaii Ine. Um, and the inspiration to Kat's incredible, amazing um, mosaic mural project 
which is named the same. And here is a view of the Hawaiian Islands from outer space. So when we look at it, it gives us a clear understanding that we're really living on the tip tops of these mountains. That's what these islands are. Not like in the continent, you can get in your car and drive across state lines and find, you know, place that is greener or, you know, more lush and um, more comfortable. We live on islands, which means that our resources are very limited. And our ancestors were experts at conservation and being able to balance their lives and their needs with whatever was available to us to survive. And they were amazing. And they survived for countless generations. Okay, so tonight I'm here to share a few. Oh my gosh. That's telling me it's 530. <laughs> so we're good. We're good. Ready. Okay, so this is an incredible piece of artwork here depicting Pele the fire goddess. And if you look in her right hand, she's holding an egg. And this egg is her little sister, Hiyaka Kapolio Pele, that was given to her in egg form when she left her island home of Kuai Helani. And so this is how the story starts. And this is how we see movement according, according to the ancient Hawaiian migration chants of Pele. So some of the names here that I've listed include Haumea, which is another one of several names for Earth Mother. Haumea is the Makuahine, or the mother of Pele and her siblings. Then we have Kane Hoalani, and Kane Hoalani is um, manifested in the big volcano that's up in the in the atmosphere in the universe, which is the sun. And in some mo'oku'ohau or genealogy chants, Kanehualani is the father of the Pele clan. There are several different mele mo'oku'ohau. Then we have Pele, or Pele Honuamea, and she is the goddess of fire and volcanoes. And it's interesting that out of all of the offspring born to Haumea, Pele is the only child or the only um, offspring that was that came into being through the birth canal. All of Haumea's other children were born from different parts of her body. But she can't because she's a goddess, you know? And Vahini can do that too. They're all goddesses that give birth. You gotta be a goddess and give birth. And so when Hiyaka is born to Haumea, she's born in the form of an egg from her palm of her hand. And so she is entrusted to Pele to take care of and to nurture and to raise. And get into that a little bit more in a little bit. Um, and then there's Ma Namako Kahai. This is an elder sister of Pele. They don't get along. She is the goddess of the ocean. Okay. And then Hiyaka Ikapolio Pele, or Hiyaka in the bosom of Pele, because when Pele leaves Kuai Hilani, Haumea gives the egg form of Hiyaka to Pele and she holds her close to her bosom and protects her and keeps her warm as she travels throughout the voyage. And then eventually she comes to be and then, but throughout her entire life's journey, she follows in the footsteps of her oldest sister, Pele. So Pele makes land, very basic, simple information. Pele's primary kuleana is to make land. The Iyaka's primary kuleana is to heal the land and make it green so that all life forms can flourish. So for that basic, simple reason, I mahalo both of them. Um, and I'm a huge fan. Because of hula, I, I am especially um, grateful to these two uh, akua vahine. And then there's kamoho ali'i. And, and there are many other siblings, but kamoho ali'i is an elder brother that appears to us in the stories as a shark god. There's two of them, Kuhai Moana and Kamoho Ali'i, and both of them are shark gods. And they're the navigator and the steersman for the canoe Honua Iakea, which is the, um, the, the mythical canoe that, um, that Pele uh, embarks on this voyage. So, Melehuaka'i Heleapele, 
is charting the course of Pele's migration and the creation of the Hawaiian archipelago, which is how we circle back to the art project itself. And so we look to the Hawaiian oral traditions for hints, for details, for information that help us to understand what are the relationships in this story? How does that continue to be important to us today? Okay, so this is a Dietrich Varez um, block print um, art, which I absolutely love. I'm a huge fan of his work. But this particular piece of artwork depicts the mythical canoe named Honua Yakea of Pele. So what happens in Kuai Hilani is she and Namako Kahai get into a huge conflict. And as a young, as a youngster, Pele is being trained by her uncle, Lonomakua, the work of the fire. And so one way of putting it, and because we don't have time to do the long version, but one way of putting it is Pele creates havoc in the homeland and in the house of Namako Kahai by carelessly lighting the fires that begin to destroy the hale. So is that like a fire that burns down the house or is this kind of stepping over boundaries and playing around with fire that she shouldn't? Nonetheless, Namako Kahai is extremely angry and upset. And so to cool things down, Aumea explains to Pele that she must leave Kuai Hilani. And so plans are made immediately. The canoe is, the canoe Honui Akea is, um, is uh, prepared. And Pele departs Kuai Hilani in search of a new home with some of her siblings. And that's how Highland Chain starts. So here's another uh, piece of artwork here. Pele on the top, Namako Kahai on the bottom. And we see this particular um, uh, event occurring time and time again as Pele travels from the northwest end of the Hawaiian Islands. She's in search of a home. So she has a paoa, which is a staff. And what she does is she strikes her power into the earth or into the, yeah, into the earth on the, on, on the land where she wants to build a home. And so when she does that, she begins to uh, stoke the fires of the crater. And because that's how her home is, she starts to build her home. And it doesn't take long for her angry sister, Namako Kahai, to come and put out her fires. So wherever she goes, she creates these craters. Her fires burn, the magma or the lava begins to flow, but everything is brought to a halt every time Namako Kahai comes and puts out her fire. So we see that happening as she goes down the island chain. And I'm gonna skip ahead just to mention it in case I forget it, but where this mural is going to be housed, where it's gonna, have a place of residence um, at Kilauea. We have a Kilauea here on Kauai. Oahu is a Kilauea on the Waianae coast, which actually is, uh, is a sea cave right in the Waianae coast. I've been to it before, um, which is amazing. And then there's Kilauea Crater on Hawaii Island, but at one time and still to today, although some islands have lost track of where their kilauea is, every island had a kilauea. And it has to do with this whole idea and story of, of creating land. Okay. All right. So one of the first migration chants that shows up in the Pele and Hi'iaka, well, in the story of Pele, because Hi'iaka is still in her egg form at this point. And... Um, I'll chant it for you and you can read the English so you know what I'm chanting about. But this is the chant that takes place when they leave Kuai Hilani, they board the canoe, Honua Iakea, and Pele sets out with the help of her brothers, the shark gods, in search of a new home. Okay, so it goes like this. Kuma koe le me kuma upo ki aloha, aina ma koe ike ole ai malaloa kune. Ah, uh, imako me kupoki, kawi kava, 
no i au kahoia kamohoa li i e. A e a e kaui ka nalu, he nalu haki ka kala, he nalu e imi ana ka aina e hiki a kua i e. A Now, there are many more lines to these chants, but this is just telling us that they're getting on the canoe. They're getting ready and they're going to sail off in search of a new home. Okay. All right. What's happening here? Okay. So I want to revert our attention to this. So this is what is referred to as the ring of fire. And there are more than 452 active and dormant and extinct volcanoes that make up this ring of fire. Here's the thing. Hawaii is not part of it, which is kind of interesting. Hawaii is actually more than about 2,000 miles to the closest um, boundary of the ring of fire. Does anybody want to guess where Hawaii is? Right there in the middle. Right in the middle, or what I would say as a Hawaiian, in the pico of the ring of fire. So what's really interesting is um, Hawaii and home of two active volcanoes, you know, Mauna Loa and Kilauea, which, by the way, just started erupting yesterday. So I'm just thinking, okay, we're totally connected. And that inspired, because I didn't know what I was going to talk about. I never know what I was going to talk about. I'm like, come on, help me. And so when all of these events started to unfold, I'm like, this is brilliant. I want to talk about this. So what is interesting is Hawaii is actually born, the Hawaiian island chain is born on a hot spot. 10% of the volcano, of volcanism on the planet, only 10% occurs on a hot spot. So Hawaii is rare and unique. And so in preparing for this, like I knew this, but it did it wasn't important to me a long time ago and I read about it or whatever. But today was important to me because I had an epiphany that reminded me why my practices of Pula is important as a sacred ritual art form. And so all of these chants that, I, that I've learned and I teach and we dance and we um, drum to and we choreograph is really about the sacred vibrations and movements of creation. Okay, so I could go on and on about this, but you got to go Google it. It's, it's incredibly fascinating. So Ring of Fire, Kilauea and Mauna Loa and thus the Hawaiian Islands right in the pico of the Ring of Fire. It's pretty... Um, Pretty fascinating. Okay, so after that first chant that I did earlier, um, it talks about them landing on Nihoa. So this is Nihoa here. And if you look at it, you can see the high cliffs and it's um, practically impossible, like me who does not sail, nor scale cliffs or, you know, uh, rock climb. I don't know how our ancestors accessed this island and actually lived there. There are amazing resources on Nihua, including uh, an, an incredible collection of endemic lolu, which are um, endemic Hawaiian um, palm species that are there. Okay, so this is the next pauku here. And I don't know this one by heart. I know the other one by heart because it's put to hula um, that we perpetuate in the halau. But this one says here, O ni hoa ka aina mako i pai mua kuai. The rock ni hoa, the first land we touched. Lelea ene mako kau yuka o ni hoa. Gladly we landed and climbed up its cliffs. O kahana noa ko upo kii. Akaneapua. It was a doing of the young sibling Kaneapua. O ka ka'ihui kava'a noi kai. 
he loaded the bow till it ducked in the waters. Vaihoa nei o kamohoa li'i a kanea pua iuka onihoa. So it was Kamahoa Li'i who left Kaneapua on the elevated cliffs of Nihoa. And then the last two lines goes, No iyo kahoya Kamahoa Li'i, which is the same line that appears in the first pauku. Um, With unsurpassed skill, Kamahoa Li'i turned his steering paddle and sailed away, which is kind of a nice way of saying he left the brother behind. I don't know what he did, to upset Kaboholi, but he left him stranded on Nihua. Apai ka'aina i kapa ia o Lehua, until we landed and came ashore on the island we named Lehua. Okay, so what these chants do is it gives us a pretty clear picture of the order of where they traveled to and maybe some things that happened while they were there. Okay. So here is that, um, that aerial photo again. Now these are just the main Hawaiian islands. And then this is Hawaii Island here and we're up here. And then the Northwest Hawaiian Islands goes up off of the corner of the screen. Now, if we were to go underneath the ocean, this is what we would see. We would see a whole chain of seamounts. These are volcanic seamounts from Kure all the way up here all the way down to Lo'ihi, which is a new island that hasn't surfaced off of Hawaii Island yet. And this is what we refer to poetically as Nakeiki Pele, or the children of Pele, which is Kopai Aino Hawaii, the Hawaiian archipelago. So how many islands are there in the Hawaiian island chain? Yeah. When I was younger, many years ago, I thought I was brilliant. I thought I was so smart. I would say, raise my hand up high. There's eight. <laughs> and the answer is wrong. So, you know, to inspire you, there are more than 137 islands that make up Kopai Aino Hawaii. So this includes the eight inhabited islands that we live on, including Kauai, but it also includes atolls which in years to come will no longer be sticking out of the ocean. They will be underwater. And um, so this chain of seamounts uh, is what we refer to as the children of Pele. But if you look at it, and this is me looking at it from the eyes of a kumuhula, and what I see is a lake. I see a string of, of, of seamounts but when I look at it poetically, it represents a lay to me. So when this particular mural, uh, mosaic, um, mu mosaic mural art piece is done, it too will resemble a lay that will adorn um, the Kilauea Point uh, Wildlife Refuge. Okay, so I'm almost power. Speaking of lay, so they leave Nihoa, and they get to Lehua, and Pele and Hi'iaka disembark the canoe, and they hike up to the highest summit of Lehua, um, Lehua Island. And the summit is named um, Ka'unuo Kala, which is the shrine of the sun. And when they go up there, they make an offering. They hold a ritual ceremony, and they give an offering. And... Um, and so I want to just take a moment to connect the practice of hula with the island of Lehua and with the story um, at the place that we are at right now. So melele are ritual prayer chants that are part of the ceremony of hula disciples when we dress the dancer, when we dress ourselves. So it is a ceremony in, in itself. And first the pa'u or the, the, the skirt is put on and then we put on our anklets and our wristlets and then the neck lay and then the last is the head lay. So those, those, uh, the neck and the head lay is accompanied with a melele and then there are other ritual chants that are done, the mele pa'u for the girding of the pa'u and the mele kupe'e to put on the wristlets and the anklets and then the melele for the final two lays that 
then completes the dressing ceremony of the dancer. So this particular um, photo is taken from Kikaha, like a few days ago. And so the sun is setting behind Nihoa. Depends on where you are on the west side. Um, you might see it. It's uh, making its way towards Lehua. Yeah, because next week in a few days, the equinox, yeah? And these are all really important in hula ceremony too. Okay. So there, are, these are two lays that um, represent the two lay that were offered at Kaunuokala at the shrine at the top of Lehua Island. One was a lay Lehua, and then the other one was a lay Kaunaoa. In the chant, it appears as lay Kaunoa. It's the same thing. It's just a different pronunciation of it. Okay. And um, did I put the words on here? I'm not sure. No, I never. Okay, let me go back. Okay, so I want to share that with you. Um, and it and you, if you listen carefully, you might you might recognize some of the words or the names that are in the chant. And if not, it's okay too. And um, I actually taught this chant at the last workshop, and we'll teach it again at a future workshop along with other things. So. Um, to sign up and stay in touch because there's a lot of exciting things to share. So the melele would go like this. Hele mai la o ka ula i ke kai e. He mala mala ma o ni i hau ua mali e. A mali e pa ka inu vaila ke inu mai la. Nahala o na ue i ke kai, no na ue kahala, no puna kawahine, no kalua, no i kila ue pa. Ah. Well, some of the islands that are named in there include Kaula, and Niihau, of course, our Kauai place name Nawe is named in there as well. Uh, the place named Puna is named, and Kilauea, of course. So these are the lay. And I'll tell you what happens in the story. After they do the ceremony up at Kaunuokala, and, um, and they begin to uh, descend back down to the canoe where it's it's pulled up inside of the inside of the cove of Lihua Island, Pele realizes that Kaneapua, the younger brother, got left behind at Nihua, and she feels bad. And so she shares with Hiiaka that, um, that this has occurred. And so by the time they get back to the canoe, she goes and speaks to Kamahualii and tells them that they cannot leave Kaneapua behind. And so after very short discussion and directions and orders, of course, from Pele, Kamohoa Li'i expertly turns the canoe around, heads back to Nihoa. They pick up Kaneapua and they come back and continue their journey. So after this chance comes Kauai. Yeah, so after they, they land at Lehua, they go back to Nihoa. Now, Nihoa is far. It's, I don't know. 150, 200 miles away. I'm making up that number, but I don't know the exact number right at the top of my head, but it's a long, long distance. And so they pick him up and they come back and then they continue their journey. Iaka um, is a part of, uh, of Pele that helps kind of soften her heart a little bit. Yeah, because Pele can be very, um, she can be very straightforward. She can be all business and no fooling around. And, and sometimes she's not as patient as we would hope that she is. But nonetheless, these are some of the legendary figures in the oral traditions of hula and chants that help us to understand the creation of the Hawaiian Islands and the Hawaiian archipelago and what took place at these different um, islands that they happened across. So with that, I want to just wrap up my portion by showing you this morning. Yeah, this is an eruption of the Napao crater fissures. 
on Hawaii Island this morning, September 17th, which to me is like the icing on the cake for tonight's gathering because it reminds us that this source of mana and energy is very much alive and that Pele is doing her thing. She's continuing to make islands bigger and creating more uh, land mass for all life forms to, to thrive. So, mahalo anui. Thank you so much for being here tonight. And, um, and especially for giving me the opportunity to be a part of this exciting project. So, Kat has um, an exciting activity that I think we all can participate in. Are there any questions in the room for our incredible speakers? No questions. Yes, no. We, we do hear you. Yeah. If you just Google Ring of Fire, it's just going to come up with all of this stuff. For yeah. Folks on Zoom, that was just a question about the Ring of Fire image that we were talking about. Yeah. Which one? This one? This is on my Facebook friend's Facebook page, Ikaika Marzo, <laughs> who lives there. And uh, anytime there's like a new, you know, a volcanic activity, whether there's cracks on the road, he's like one of the first people to report it and share it with the community. And there are others. This is actually a video. So if you go on my Facebook page, I shared it to my Facebook page, Kehaulani Kikua. Um, it's actually, I took a screenshot of a video which shows all of the, you know, all of the fires fountaining. It's really exciting. Yes. Question of whether or not this story will be included in the mural. link that um, will have a video that will sort of be a condensed version of all the all the workshops and the the knowledge that Kumo is sharing. And some of the workshops that we do, like the last one that we did, we wanted the participants to learn a chant. So sometimes we have handouts, sometimes we'll have a link. And, um, but the overall goal is to create this amazing uh, mosaic mural project. Thank you. Um, they will be, I'm trying to reorganize my life. I'm coming out of two years of hibernation <laughs> and healing, <laughs> but yes, but yes, definitely so. Yeah, thank you. Are there questions online? Uh, yeah, any, any of the folks on Zoom, if you have any questions, if you want to pop those in the chat, we'll be able to bring that into the room as well. And while that's happening, I just want to, uh, again, share my Thank incredible you. appreciation for all that you've shared. Thank you. The stories and the mana'o that is going to be infused into this beautiful art installation. All of the love of all the participants, I think, that are, whose hands will help create this is going to be the permanent story of this beautiful uh, piece. And as we know, Kilauea Point. National Wildlife Refuge is indeed a very special place that draws people from all around the world. And so what an honor um, for it to play host to this story and to show our part of this whole chain um, that is not only um, culturally important, but is so important to the wildlife that we preserve and protect. We are just a part of that story. And so um, many of the, our, the other fish and wildlife colleagues as well who are working tirelessly to help protect species that work out on these atolls and all across Papahanaumokuakea don't have that opportunity to be in front of people. So again, I think it's our, it's our kuleana to be able to play host to this story and to raise people's awareness and their inspiration around that. So um, anyway, just wanted to echo that. As a friends group, we are so honored to partner with Kat and Carol and Kumu to Thank help you. create this and again to Play a host to the community who will be creating this artwork. So uh, there'll be uh, many, many workshops uh, over the coming months to develop this. Um, so please, if you're if you're not 
getting that information, please plug into our newsletter and we'd be happy to share where those workshops are happening if you would like to participate. And as we had mentioned, there'll be two of them on Saturday, October 19th as a part of National Wildlife Refuge Week. That's an opportunity right in Kilauea to do some hands-on work to help develop this piece. And for those of you in the room here today, if you're so inclined, we get to do that here in just a few moments. So awesome. uh, is there anything in the chat room? Okay. In, any other final words? paper and hand it to me and how oh and I'll have my uh, registrar add your name and you'll get to know about everything that's happening on this island more than you ever wanted to know but you won't miss anything and the only people who will watch that calendar more than you will be politicians because they want to be everywhere where people are that's right so, <laughs> that's brilliant, Carol. That, of course, was the vo voice of Carol Yotsoda of the Garden Island Arts Council. Any other words? And if not, mahalo nui loa for you folks online for joining us. And for all of you here in the room, we get to continue. So, again, mahalo nui Thank loa. Thank you so much. Mahalo. Oh, thanks. You know, I never ever know what the heck was. I don't know what I'm going to talk about. <laughs> I honestly didn't know what I was going to talk about. But, you know, you just trust that. For those of you watching yeah. on Zoom, it's not really very easy mm -hmm. to um, show you the workshop and not really too interesting if you can't comp can contribute yourself. So we're going to shut down the Zoom now. Um, but there will be opportunities to see videos of workshops just like Kumu mentioned and obviously to participate in the future. So thanks very much for joining us on Zoom and uh, all the best. See you next year, next uh, month. <laughs>